Now that we've covered the basics of microcontrollers and built an example game, let's dive into a more advanced topic called Pulse Width Modulation, or PWM for short. PWM is a type of signal that conveys information through its frequency, duty cycle, and period. The attribute of PWM that we will be using in this lesson is how we can use PWM as a way of outputting an analog voltage to an LED. Just as we saw in the Introduction to Modern Electronics course, when the voltage to an LED is varied, the intensity of the LED light output is also varied. We can actually use a PWM output signal to do very much the same thing. By varying the duty cycle of a PWM signal, we can control the LED light intensity. So with that information in hand, let's make a Cyclops eye with five LEDs, where one bright LED moves back and forth. Here we can see the complete schematic for this lesson, but let's go through each sub-circuit and explain what is going on. First, we'll build a power supply using a 9-volt battery and a 7805 plus 5-volt regulator to feed a plus 5-volt power supply to our circuit. A red LED will be used as notification that power is good. Next, we'll connect the plus 5 volt power in ground to the microcontroller. The reset control consists of a push button connected to pin 1 of the microcontroller and then to ground. Additionally, a pull-up resistor is added to pin 1 of the microcontroller. A USB to serial converter module connects to the TX and RX pins of the microcontroller and it also connects to ground. Then the DTR pin connects through a 0.1 microfarad capacitor to pin 1 of the microcontroller. A 16 MHz crystal and two 22 picofarad capacitors connect to X1 and X2 of the microcontroller, forming the frequency control circuit. And finally, five LEDs with five current limiting resistors connect to digital pins 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11. All of these digital pins are special in that they can output PWM. And there we have the complete hardware schematic for this lesson. So now let's take a look at the software side of this lesson. First we start with the setup and loop functions. Next we'll add five integers, one for each LED. Each integer will hold a value between 0 and 4. This value will correlate with how bright the LED should be with 4 being the brightest and 0 the darkest. An integer array called intensity holds five values of brightness intensity that we will use to tell the analog write function how bright to make each LED output. In the setup function, we initialize pins 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11 to outputs. And now in the loop function, things get a little tricky. We will use two while loops. The first while loop runs some code until the brightest LED is LED 0. Then the next while loop starts and runs until the brightest LED is 4. This should happen over and over again so that the brightest LED bounces back and forth between LED 0 and LED 4. This means that inside of the first while loop, we need to shift each LED's value up until LED 0 is 4. And similarly, in the second while, shift each LED's value down until LED 4 is 4. And after each shift, the output brightness of the five LEDs should be updated by using the analog write function and the specific LED's brightness, which is saved in the LED 0 through LED 4 integers. Lastly, we'll add a short 200 millisecond delay to each while loop so the Cyclops eye moves back and forth only a few times per second. And with that, the software program is complete. This is a more complicated program than we're used to, so take some extra time and look through the code to make sure you can follow along with what is happening and where. Now let's build up this experiment. Here are all the parts that we'll use. The larger parts are a jumper wire kit, the components kit, and a breadboard. Specifically from the components kit, we'll be using a 7805 plus 5 volt regulator, six 100 ohm resistors, a 10 kilo ohm resistor, one 0.1 microfarad capacitor, two 10 microfarad capacitors, a push button, 
an A2 Mega 328 with Arduino compatible bootloader installed, a 16 MHz crystal, six red LEDs, two 22 picofarad capacitors, a 9 volt battery connector, four jumper wires, a USB to serial converter with jumper wires, a 9 volt battery, and a computer with the Arduino IDE installed. Now let's build the circuit part by part. We'll use a time lapse video showing how we constructed the circuit. Take your time and build it with us so that your circuit is just as perfect as ours is. And the last few connections connect the USB to serial converter module to the microcontroller for programming. With everything set, connect the USB to serial module to your computer and power up the circuit. Then use the Arduino IDE to download the program to the microcontroller. After a few moments, you can see it running. It looks okay, but let's improve it by changing the 200 millisecond delay in the code to only 100 milliseconds. Now it looks a lot better, and we can easily imagine a robot's head around it, creating a fearsome cyclops. Every human being on this earth loves fading LEDs. It's a bizarre thing, but somehow they mesmerize us all into a trance-like state of tranquility. For this and other reasons, fading LEDs are everywhere in the modern world, from refrigerators and car lights to cell phone lights and street lights. However, knowing how to make an LED fade in and out with PWM is a simple idea, but it brings you to a larger world because you'll find out that PWM is used for many other very cool things like motor control in robotics. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. In our final lesson, we'll take a look beyond Arduino and discover how professionals develop and debug programs for the same 18 mega microcontrollers that we've been using.